Okay. I'm going to demonstrate the chia head or really a sculpture of a head. I'm going to do people because I tend to get the most questions about that, but the things I'm showing you about how to create depth with an eye socket and eyeball and things like that, you can use on anything. It doesn't necessarily have to be a person. Like if you look at this dog, for example, his little eyebrows add expression. So as I'm talking about how to add expression with how you place the lid or the eyebrow, they apply to whether you're doing a character, they apply to whether you're doing an animal or a person. So all different things you can use. And what I'm gonna show you is one way to do it. You don't necessarily have to do things exactly the way I do because it's one way to go about it. it gets you thinking about depth, but sometimes a little bit different thing will work differently, will work better for your, your design. Like if you look at this one, I wanted him to look pretty surprised, pretty shocked. So if I look at this one, those aren't the most realistic looking eyeballs, but they get the effect across because they're kind of popping out of his face. They have real long, tall shapes to them. So it's, it's giving it a different effect that way. So even if you're not going realistic, which you don't have to, you can play with how you put things on the face. What I want you to understand is there are proportions and things that you should be looking at while you're looking at your image. That's why we had to find reference images and you should have those out while you're working because that's gonna help you see how things line up so you can get things even if you alter them to look more realistic or to look more believable. So, but we're gonna start with, let's see here. I don't wanna move these back a little bit. And so you can do, and I, we'll talk about too, about how eyebrows and eye, the angles of the eyelids and the mouth really do a ton to add expression and how you can complement that with how you add depth and things to the cheek. So we'll kind of go through all that as we go through. I'll set these back here to make a little more room. I think one of the hardest things to do as you're starting is to figure out how to sculpt the actual form itself. I need a little bit of softer clay here. That's good. And you want to start with a pretty big blob of clay because we're going to be building solid. You can also build hollow when you're sculpting. And just to mention that because we'll have some options to add sculpture to things later. If you were going to make an armature and build a rounded armature, does anybody remember from the teapot? I know this is thinking back a ways. What is an armature? Anybody? Anybody? It's a porch. What is it? It's a porch the clay. Fabulous. Somebody remembers. Good job, Danielle. So it's going to support the clay while you're building with it. An easy armature that works really well is taking crumpled pieces of newspaper and forming your piece that way. What does clay do as it dries? Carolina, can you tell me one thing clay does? It shrinks. Exactly. What else does it do, Diamond? It, hopefully it doesn't crack, but it can. Yeah, you're right. You're right. So it may crack on us, so it, it, it shrinks. Did I say, did you say that? You said it dries. You said it shrinks. It shrinks, it's gonna dry, it gets a little harder, right? And so if I wanted to make an armature, this could support it while I'm building, but to have a little give to it is nice because then as the clay dries and shrinks, it has some give and it can shrink with it. So I'll take crumpled newspaper, I, make, I take a wrapping page, it's like I'm wrapping a present, a little armature present for myself. And by doing it this way, I don't have to wrap the whole thing in a ton of tape, which is less effective. I can just take one piece of tape. And I like one big piece because it kind of winds around the whole thing and holds it in place. And then I can shape it and move it. Maybe I take another piece and go around this way. But I can make the shape of my head with the newspaper and build bigger. It tends to, I think, works better for bigger pieces of sculpture, for bigger things that you're making. Now, one of the common mistakes that students do when they do this is that this is, this to me is about the size you need your sculpture to be for this project. If you start with an armature, once you add the thickness of clay around it, it's going to get really big and really thick. So you want to be making the armature a little bit, you want to make the armature a little bit smaller than you actually need to account for the thickness of the clay. You would then take chunks of clay, and almost like you're making a slab or a press mold, you make your little slabs and build it around your armature. So that comes up like that. So that's option one. We are gonna do for this project, I'm showing you that because a little bit later, if you continue on in ceramics too, especially, you have options. And I wanna know you what, I will give you some of the options if you wanna add sculpture to some of the optional building pieces. Now we're gonna be building solid and hollowing. Why do we have to hollow? 
remembers. <coughs> air. Air. So it doesn't explode in the kiln. We need air to be able to move through and out of it. If it's more than, what is the thickness? Remembers, what is the maximum thickness? Any idea, Julia? Um, when we did our slabs, they were one fourth. What's the maximum thickness they could be? Do you remember? Do you remember, Heather? You never want to go much more than an inch thick. If you go an inch thick, it's, it's kind of pushing the limits of how thick your clay will be before it cracks. So we try to keep our sculptures and things under an inch thick. Now, when I grab this blob of clay out of the clay bucket, it's gonna have all these you know, holes and edges and things, and it's not one solid piece. I want one solid piece to work with. So I'm gonna do what's called wedging. I've mentioned it very briefly, I think, but just to go over it. What wedging does, it aligns clay particles, and most importantly, what is that? It's like a little piece of bisquare in there. Most importantly, it's going to get all the air out of it, hopefully. So what I do is I press on the clay and I roll it forward or toward me. It's a little bit like... It's like you're making a pizza. Yeah, it's a little bit like working with dough. But the thing with dough is you're working air into it and I want to work air out of it. That's the difference. So I'm kind of pressing on it, moving it toward me, and my goal is to get one solid piece of clay. You can do it like this. You'll see it kind of starts to, cur to turn. You can hit it. But you're really, the key is compressing it. Like a ball. Like a this is drier clay than I realized. It'll be all right. Get that crack out of there. All right. So I wedge it. I get it solid. So as you're starting, this is the first thing you're going to do is get one solid piece of clay. I think that's about. Blah, there's my blah, something like that. Now I've got to make this look like a head. And like I said, I'm going for a human head. So I want to make it, anybody want to take a guess what's the shape of a human head basically? Oval. Kind of oval, exactly. I think of it like an upside down egg. So if I'm looking at my head, I've got this thicker part back here and then it comes down, it's almost like the center of the axis of the egg is this way. And your chin tends to be a little more narrow. So as I'm deciding how to make this all fit, I need a neck and a little bit more for it to stand up. But I want to start to shape it. I'll do it up here so you guys can see better. I want to start to shape it so I'm getting that shape. So if I look at, let's see, this guy. He's got, there's kind of the egg shape from the side. And there's the, like the, the center of it, a little narrower here, a little thicker here. And then it comes in, obviously it should come in a little more. It comes in more toward the back of the head. Usually it comes in more than that. Did I have her come in? She comes in a little more. Oh, I squished the top of her head? Oh, that's too bad. Bless you. Oh, well, that's not worry about that. We'll be keeping that one. All right, so it looks like if I look at this, this is kind of looking like the front. And oftentimes with the chia heads, if you're making the chia head, they kind of sit on a table or on a shelf and you might want to have them their chin up a little bit, looking up at you so that you'll see their face as it comes up. So I might want to, it's very loud. I tend to do a lot of packing with the, like sort of hitting it with a rounded hand so that this comes in like this. So I'm kind of forming that top to make it that oval shape. You can see the oval shape right there. And then, now this is the part where I want to start to put the neck in and get that neck shape in there. So I can start by using like a karate chop, like a yah, 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 and get the neck in there. There you go. You can, you know, strangle your sculpture a little bit, that helps. It's not anything yet, so it's okay, right? I like to take the heel of my hand and see how nicely that fits in there to get the back of the neck and kind of push that in a little bit. There we go. Ooh, I kind of squished the front when I did that. 
And I think this is one of the hardest parts for students because we're not used to thinking 3D. You're not used to having to visualize how this is all going to come together. So this is why we needed the references and this is why we needed those pictures so that you could see, I'm kind of getting that egg shape to the side. Push that up, looking like a turtle right now. Let's bring this down a little bit. the neck in maybe bring that up a little bit add the jawline and I would probably spend a little more time refining this getting it just like I like and looking at my pictures and looking at say all right is that the look that I want does that look like a jawline could look but I want to keep moving on here so that we get through all the different parts oops don't need that so Something like that. This side seems a little bit thick there. But I'm just smoothing parts, bringing that in, kind of like so. Something like that. Make sense? Questions? No? All right. So I have the basic head shape in here, and I'm, I'm going to come in and add hair and stuff later too. We'll see how it goes. So, and this is a little bit thick. I would fix this up. I'm going to leave it there because it adds a nice stability right now, but I would clean this up and cut this so it has a nicer edge a little later and have more of a base on it. Now, I want to start to figure out placement of how things are going to fit on the face. It's sort of like making a sketch before you get into the details. I want to know where things are going to go so that it works in space. If I say your face is symmetrical, what does it mean for your face to be symmetrical? Frankie, what does that mean? Exactly. It's the same on both sides. So I'm going to start with the line right down the center of the face. That's going to be my guide so I know that things are going to even out on the center. Now I need a line to indicate how far down the face my eyes are going to go. Who knows about how far, like in a fraction, about how far down your head are your eyes? Anybody got a guess? What is it? Face far is the measure that it's, it's like way under the eye. It's, it's basically three. And like between your forehead to your eyes, it's like one, two, three. If you, if you start there, that's true. What if I start at the top of my head? Anybody know? Like, like What's your guess? Like from the top of my head to my eye? What do you think, a fourth, a third, a half? I think it's a half. You think a half? Who, who agrees? Halfway down your head or your eyes? You think halfway? <laughs> yes. No, you guys asleep today? No? <coughs> but halfway? They all believe you. Good job. You should be like, no, not halfway. People don't usually believe that. Because you have this big blank forehead here, not a whole lot happens. It, I, I will show you. I need, I need a volunteer. So you know I'm not just a freak of nature. Who wants to be my volunteer? Awesome. Come on up, George. All right. So what I'm going to do, I will take the knife, even though it's the super dull friendly knife, and I will give you the nice dull wood tool, and we will measure the distance from the top of our heads to our eyes and from our eyes to our chin. So take that. There you go. You stand right here. And you're going to measure, like this, the distance from your eye to your chin. You gotta hold it. See how I'm holding it like this? Look at me. Hold it like this with your fingers, like that. There you go. Now a little bit further up so it's right in your corner. Don't poke yourself in the eye, though. No. Well, no. Okay, now take that and you're gonna flip it to the eye, from your eye to, oh, geez, get my eye, to the top of my head. <laughs> Look at that, it's the same. It's exactly half, it's exactly the same. What about you? Can you flip it now? Don't poke your eye. <laughs> you moved your measurements. All right, I'll help you. There you go. So from here to here, there's his eye to his chin. We're going to go from here to here to the top of his head, even with his fancy hair. See? Look at that. It's the same. It's the same distance. And most, thank you. Hand a round of applause for George. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you.
So it's not just me. It's and we're all a little different, you know. Some people is a little more, some a little less. Some people like puff the hair, so it looks like more. Some people less. But the idea is that if you want to make a realistic person, you got to move the eyes halfway down the face. Most students who don't study the face don't realize that, and they make the eyes like what would be in the forehead. And people are like, well, what's wrong with his head? It looks cut off because we don't realize it's that far down your face. So I'm gonna make an eye line. Let's go up here. About halfway down the face is gonna be my eye line, and that's helps if it's straight. And that's gonna be where my eyes are gonna go. Now halfway between my eye line and my chin, I'm gonna add another little line, and that's gonna be the bottom of my nose. So there's the bottom of the nose. That's a little high yet. Can go a little bit more. And then halfway from there to there is my mouth. So I've indicated where everything goes. I've got it all lined up so that I know where to put things before I start. Whatever animal, person, creature you're doing, kind of line it up before you start so you don't get halfway done. Make like one beautiful eyeball. It's super sculptural and nice. And you're like, but it should be here. And you got it in the wrong spot. So line it up first. Kind of get your sketch on there. Once you get that. Now, I'm gonna start with eye sockets because I'm gonna dig those out. And I wanna think about the structure beneath the face because if I can get depth correct by the structure underneath it, it will look better. This is a sculpture, there's no drawing, so I need to know what goes in and what comes out. So I need everyone to fill your face right now, and I have clay in my hands, I'm doing it, so you can handle this. Sorry, CJ, you can. So you're gonna feel your face, and tell me, what do you feel? What do you feel, Alondra? I feel rigid. What do you feel right here? What? They call me your Did they call you Alondra? Yeah. Angelou. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Angelou, what do you feel right here? It's like the pressure of being on TV, like get things wrong. Not TV, on, you know, on video. <laughs> Monty Bang. Not on TV. All right. So, Angela, what do you feel? You feel bone, right? So there's stuff sticking up right here. Do your eyes go in or out? In. in. What happens up here? Uh, it sticks out. Alondra, what's down here? What do you feel down here? The bone here, and then here, does it stick out? Yeah. yeah. So as you're sculpting your face, it kind of goes in here, your lips stick out. So you want to be thinking about what's going in, what's going out, so that you get all the different parts coming in and out exactly, and you kind of get some ideas of what, what you want to, where you want to add your depth. So your eyeball is actually a sphere, a ball that sits in the socket. So I'm going to make an eye socket, and it's going to look funny right now. It's going to look kind of alien because it's really like the skeleton part of it. It's the structure underneath. So, like I said, it's a little bit, you know, creepy looking right now. It's kind of leaning. How come I gotta lean? There we go. It'll get there, it'll get there. So let's see. Definitely alien looking right now. But there we go. So now I have the eye socket, so I can start to add the depth. I'm gonna think about eyeballs that I'm gonna to add to it. What if I put this giant eyeball sticking out of the face right there? What kind of expression would I be going for? Scary, surprise, like ah! So, I don't know, like shocked perhaps. That works because it's sticking out of the face, it's big, right? If I want it to look like it could be a bunch of different things, a regular eye, I gotta change up my eyeball. I don't want it to be quite so big. And I'm not gonna do the whole sphere sitting in there. I'm gonna do kind of like a rounded football shape, an oval shape and have it fit in that space. That fits a lot better. So now, let's see, go back out there. Make this a little bit longer. That would be, that fits inside the socket a little better. So that would be a little bit more realistic look if I wasn't going for the, that extreme expression. Now I like to work with the eyeball when it's still in my hand, because it's easier for me to work with here and if I mess this up, I squish it, I do a new one. If it's here and it's already scored and slipped and I gotta work around other pieces, it's more difficult. So I'm gonna work with this in my hand first and I'm gonna start with, where'd my little loop tool go? I had a little bit of, here it is. Um, and I'm, I'm not drawing a pupil on here, I'm sculpting. Remember, everything has to be sculpted. So I'm gonna think, how could I do this to make it three dimensional? Well, your eye, pupil and your iris are dark. So you want those to show maybe a shadow would work. So I could carve in an indent and that cast shadow, like in this one, gives it more of that, that dark look. Now, if you think about your eye, if you're looking straight at someone and their eyelids are not covering their pupil, they're gonna look like this eye, 
right? Without really changing your expression too much, when you look straight at a person, there tends to be either your top lid touching the top of your iris or covering it a little bit. The bottom eyelid, same thing. Typically touches, maybe doesn't cover quite as much, but they touch the colored part of your eye. They touch the iris. So if I'm sculpting something and putting it in there, I don't want to have a little tiny pupil in the middle if I don't want it to look shocked. If I want to play with other expressions, I need a bigger hole. So what I'm doing is I'm taking the loop tool and I'm twisting it and it's gonna give me, well, maybe I'm gonna go a little bigger. I'll use the slightly larger rounded loop tool. And I'm twisting it because it gives me a really nice round circle. And my clay has been sitting out, it's getting a little dry. By the way, I used a little bit drier clay for this, not the super fresh clay because that clay is really soft and doesn't tend to hold its shape as well. So I kind of got like in between, I don't think too dry that I can't punch it and move it and get the form very well, but I do want something that I can, so um, that will hold its shape for me and I can mold it, so kind of in the middle. So. See, I'll leave this out. And then I'm going to score and slip it in here. Do you see how nicely I scorchy, scorchy? You guys know how to do that. I'm not going to show you, make you watch me do that again. But if I were keeping this, I would have scored and slipped that into place. And now I can start to play with eyelids and eyebrows. You can get a ton of expression with eyelids and eyebrows. So now is where I start to play with that. I'm going to start with a little ball of clay, really smush it together about that size. And then I'm going to flatten it. even thinner than your spout last time. After I flatten a little bit, I'm gonna pick it up so it doesn't get stuck in my canvas. But I'm thinking, I want this to be like the thickness of skin almost. So you have homework tonight. Your homework is to go home and make faces in the mirror and check out things about your face. Notice the shape of your nose, the curve here. I'm not gonna do it now, the shape of your nostrils. I don't anything, you know, show you anything you don't need to see. Could be yucky in there, I don't know, I don't know. But what you wanna do is like, what are the actual shapes of your eyes? They're not perfect football shapes. Everyone is a little bit different. One eye is different than the next. It's symmetrical mostly, but not entirely. So I want you to look at those things, look at all the different parts about your face and notice them. And notice, if you haven't put makeup on, boys might not notice this, but like, notice there is a thickness to your eye. And in noticing these things, you're going to understand how to put things together. Now that actually might have been a little bit, but I cut like an eye shape out of my tiny slab. And then, let's see, I'm going to cut, I'm going to make it a point. So I took that side off so I can get a point on there. And I'm going to put that point here. Now I can play with, this is a little bit thick. I'm going to fix up this edge here. Because again, I don't want to have to work around this eye that I just fixed up. But I'm going to make it nice and thin and get a nice edge to my eyelid. I'm going to add that point on the bottom too. Get it nice and thin. Oh, did I do it the same? I did. I got to get the canvas off of this side because I did it the same. And I can put this, too much of a point there. I'm just going to have the bottom touch. And that's a little bit bigger slab that I need. I could leave that slab in there and have it become like a cheekbone if I wanted. Kind of bring that in. Maybe I'll do that and leave that on there. But kind of loot in and take out a little bit of this extra and push this in. It's covering the bottom of the iris right there and I'm just setting that in place. And I'm going to play with this top eyelid a little more because that can give me more expression. And at the same time, I might just take a coil and make it my eyebrow so I can play with my expression with an eyebrow. So we'll take, we'll take this one out so we can kind of focus on one. What's going on? We don't have a name. Do we have a name? I, I'm gonna, I made a, a male before. I'd like to make a female. I need a female name. I personally prefer sculpting old people. I find them more interesting. They have more wrinkles and lines and things. So I'd like to do another female. We need an old, old woman name. 
Anyone? Betty Wop. What was it? Betty. Betty? Betty Wop. Betty Wop. <laughs> How much is Betty? Yeah. Last last okay. period we had Mildred. Let's go for Betty. I like Betty. Or I've got Aunt Betty. She's a nice lady. So, all right. So if I have this, how does Betty feel today? How's she feeling? She seems a little stressed out. She's not really happy. She's kind of mad at you. You can't sass Aunt Betty. You get this face, right? Huh? So this is definitely like she's not feeling real happy. I can make her even more unhappy with you. Now Aunt Betty's really mad. She's really mad. And all I did was move the eyebrow down and angle it just a little bit more. So you can play with the angles of things. Now let's see. See, you made up with Aunt Betty. Now she's gonna be she's gonna be happy. She's gonna be like, oh, you're sweet. So maybe we'll arc the eyebrow a little bit. We'll move the eyelid up a little. See, now she seems happier, doesn't she? She's like, oh, she's a good kid, right? So simply changing those around a little bit can make a difference. You know, what if I go back to this eyeball over here? We'll put some eyelids on there. Let's see, we'll put this eyelid in here. Look at this one. This is like the cartoons where the eyebrows like, what did you do? See, now you're shocked yet, Betty, right? By changing, and all I did was change the placement of the eyelid and the eyebrow. So think about how you place those so you get different looks. I, I, let's go for happy. This, this is nice. She's having a good day. Yeah, Betty. There we go. All right, so we put this in place. We're gonna loot this. Get some of the extra clay off of there. There's a little more than we need. And then I'm gonna use one of these tools here. I try not to use needle tools very much when I'm sculpting because it's so tempting and so easy to just make a line because they tend to draw. I'm gonna use one of these tools. What are these tools called? What are these? Loop. This one's a loop tool. Close, we just use that one. Do you remember, Jamie, what this is called? No, oh, did I hear it? What? what? Wood, wood tool? No, wood. Wood. Oh, what is it? Wood sculpting. Wood sculpting tool. Perfect. They're really just called wood tools, I think. I don't know. I call them wood sculpting tools, so I remember what they're for, and you guys know what they're for. Wood sculpting tool is perfect for my sculpture project. Me and Betty. See the connection, right? All right. So I'm going to take this and I'm going to add a curve above her eyelid. I'm going to add that little eyelid and I'm gonna make it nice and curved so she still looks happy. There you go, babe. And then, so it's just adding a little, that's a little high. I probably could have made it look closer to the eyelid. But I can start to add these different details by sculpting. You know, she's older too. Maybe she's got some laugh lines because she's smiling now. She's like, oh, that's funny. So I can put some little wrinkles on the side, maybe something like that. But I'm creating a groove, I'm not making a line, and that's gonna make it more sculptural. Now let's go back to the eyebrow that we put in here. If I do this, I'll add a little texture, right? A little texture to the eyebrow. Does that look like an eyebrow now? No. Betty, you got a caterpillar on your face, no! See, it's a caterpillar, right? Please don't put caterpillars on people's faces. Put eyebrows on their faces. It's textures, it's not a thing. I can leave a little bit there to actually give it some depth. Or, you know, maybe, you know, because if, if it was if it was an older man, you know how like when men get older, they have like the crazy eyebrows sometimes. They're like, he, he takes a little more management, you know? A woman, she probably plucks them, right? So maybe I won't add an extra piece there. Maybe I'll come in and just add, I don't know, I make that lid crease high up. That's a little high. So maybe I'll do, but I'm gonna, I want it to look realistic. So I'm thinking about the direction of the eyebrow. And I'm actually having it kind of follow. You should look on your picture and see what happens to the eyebrow. See how it's little lines that actually follow along the edge. So getting the, any time I'm adding the texture to think of the length and the direction of the hair I'm describing is gonna make it look more realistic. All right, now we gotta keep moving along here. I'm taking too long with that. So let's get some of this extra clay off. She's got some nice cheekbones here from that clay. I could take more of it off if I didn't want that. And I'm gonna make a nose. Now, do you know that your whole life, your <coughs> nose and ears always grow? Did you know that? Isn't that crazy? They never stop growing. It's because they're made of what? Cartilage. 
cartilage, perfect. And the cartilage, your bones stop growing, but your, your cartilage doesn't. So, you know, if you want to make someone look older, give them bigger noses and ears, right? My person last, last period, she had some rhinoplasty. Her nose got kind of small. Do you know what rhinoplasty is? No. It's getting a nose job, like altering your nose. Rhinoplasty. Doesn't that sound terrible? Like your nose, like you're a rhino? I think it just sounds terrible. <laughs> All right, so if I had to make my nose a shape, what shape would I make? Would it be? Triangle. What do you think? Isabel, what, oh, I heard it. What was it? Triangle. triangle. Now, Isabel, how do I make a triangle 3D? What does it become? A pyramid. What's another thing it could become if it were circular in 3D? A cone. Yes. So, a cone. So I'm going to make, you could do either one, pyramid or a cone. I took a little ball of clay. I squished one side, so I kind of rolled it into a coil a little bit, but then like made one side almost like a carrot. And then I flattened one side, and I flattened the back because I want to attach this. I don't want any air to get trapped. So I'm going to smack it on there. Ready? Smack! So I don't get air trapped in there. There you go. It's a nice nose, huh? Does it look like a nice nose? If she were Bert from Bert and Ernie, right? Do people's noses look like that? No. Those of you who shook your head nice, it's nice. You're being nice to me. I appreciate that. But I want to make this look like an actual nose, right? So I'm going to take, I can use, I can use a um, fettling knife here. I'm going to use my wood sculpting tool because they work so nicely. And I'm going to loot this in. This clay is really dry. I should have gotten something a little bit softer it would loot in a little better but that's all right we'll work with it it's good it's good roll with it her nose just got crooked how'd that happen all right so there's this i got that i'm gonna kind of loot it into that top edge she's got some boogers in her eye now i accidentally got some in her eye all right i think it's gonna work better. there you go sorry betty all right, so now, and then I'm gonna loot it into the bottom. I'm gonna add some nostrils on the outside just to keep that sculptural look. My wood sculpting tool is fabulous for that. There's some little ones that have this little curve at the end. These are great. I'll do one facing this way so you guys can see for kind of curving around that edge and then you scoop it away. We'll do one on this way. I'm gonna curve it around this edge and sculpt away. I can't see very well, so I hope it works out. Yeah, not bad. Sort of like that. Now I want to give her some nostrils. You get to pick your, your piece's nose. I'm actually going to pick, pick her nose, yeah. But I have a question though, before I pick her nose and create a nostril in there, what is the shape of a nostril of a person? Is it a circle? What do you think? Joe, is it a circle? Is your nostril a circle? <laughs> you haven't studied it recently, have you? I won't, I won't ask. I won't put you on the spot. They're not usually circles, are they? You're not pigs, right? They're not circles. I don't know. I guess I don't even know if a pig has a circle. Nose. They tend to have a little bit of a curve to it, a little more oval. They tend to be different shapes. Don't look now. But when you get home and you're doing your homework and studying your face, check out the shape of your nostrils. They're different. Often, they're sort of like a, a jelly bean shape. I'm going to give her one a jelly bean shape. So I'm going to take this little tool and I'm going to come in like so, see? see, she can breathe now. She's like, thank you, you're welcome, baby. Glad I could help you out. I might add a little structure to the front of her nose, something like that, we'll see. It's kind of, she's a little snooty looking, it's kind of turned up a little. There, so noses are really sculptural. You can have fun with noses, you can add little pieces. So I've got little nostrils in there, I can't, she's kind of stuck. Ugh. So I've sculpted the edges and the corners and you can see all the different pieces and things there. So you can have fun with that. Check out noses. Today, your second part of your homework, while you're in class and you're bored, not this one obviously, but like a different one, um, just look around and notice the shapes of people's noses. <laughs> not in a creepy way. Don't do this. Did Michael Jackson have like seven different noses? Probably, yeah. <laughs> It's unfortunate. It's an excellent singer, but you know, got a little crazy at the end. Um, and the shapes of people's ears. Check out the shapes of their jaw lines. We're all very different and unique and fabulous, and we're similar proportions, but the curves of the edge of your nose and the edge of your ear and the shape of your eye would make you you and make it your distinct look. So if you're just looking around, notice, you know, some people have the free hanging earlobe, some are attached. 
Just things to notice when you're in class. It's very interesting. You're like, huh, look at how unique and fabulous we all are. You can, you can put piercings on your thing. Sure, sure, you bet. All right, so now, what's her name? Betty, Betty. Betty's got a nose, she's got a mouth. We gotta give her some expression here, right? So I'm gonna take a little coil. Now, whether you're making a male or female, they're gonna have that little divot in their mouth. We just tend to think of women having that more than men because they accentuate it with their lipstick. But they'll both be there. Let's see, I think I need, I need another piece here. So I'm gonna take a couple little coils much do I need and I'm just gonna play with them to get some expression there we go now if you're creating a mouth they're all gonna taper to the sides it isn't just sort of like stop short so as you're working with it I'm gonna make one let's do this one this will be our bottom lip so I'm making two little coils and this is pretty little because I didn't leave a whole lot of space there she's dainty Betty and I'm going to taper those edges and then I can play with it you know, maybe I can give it a little curve and put it on there. So like I said, sometimes just one is enough. It's really dry. I gotta get a little bit on here so it doesn't crack apart while I'm playing with it. You shouldn't need to add water, but I've been talking too long. My clay's getting dry. I'm gonna get rid of the guides now. I don't need those because I know what's left. Oh, see? Something like that. And then I make the top. Now I have this little piece for the top. I'm going to crease it to make a little V, and then I'm gonna bring it down again so it's like a little birdie. Beep, 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 see? You know, like the little stereotypical bird in the sky where it's just like an M kinda? Kinda like that. And then I can play with it to give her different expressions. So remember earlier when she was like kinda mad at you? Let's see if we can make her do that again. So like if I'd kept that eye, I could do, oh, see, I like <coughs> cracked the lip. She's more sad, she's kinda like, your lips are turned down. I'm not having a good day. No. Maybe I could do, maybe I make it so she's like, her mouth is open. Maybe she's yelling at you. Stop it. Ah. That's not really what her voice was doing there. She's singing. Maybe she's an opera singer. I don't know. Maybe. Maybe she's a little bit like, hmm. Hmm. So you can play with that a ton and like get different looks, different things, just by how you anchor the mouth. So if you're creating expression with your eyebrows, make sure you're matching that with your mouth. Maybe we should we make her smiling. Should be should be smiling. I don't know. She seems like this. Her mouth should be open a little, doesn't she? How should she be? How's Betty feeling today? So I might do something like this if I'm going to open her mouth. I might first figure out where it's going to go and just carve it out a little bit so that she looks like she's yelling right now. And like I said, sometimes just adding little details might be enough. You don't have to do all these different things. But I could take this and by carving that out just a little bit and then adding this. Now there's a cast shadow and her mouth looks much more believably open than when I just placed these on her face. I would perhaps score and slip these on. Your lips really are attached to your face, so you can do things like kind of loop this edge in. And with opening her mouth, what happens when I open my mouth? What happens in my jaw? Kayla, Kayla what happens? It drops, exactly. So if I've done that, it's not a bad idea to then add a little more clay here because if the mouth is open, it would likely drop. So I might wanna, if you're doing something like that, I still wanna think about the anatomy of what I'm creating so that it's, it's looking more believable and sculptural. So there we go. So I would loop these in a little more. I'm not gonna make you watch me loop this. You guys know how to, loop the clay together but I might come in here very carefully and I'm, I'm purposely using the wood sculpting tool because it's hard for me to get my hand in there and then maybe I'll flatten this edge so it comes into the face and like we said I also want to think about structure of the face so I might come in here and say you know if she is really in fact kind of talking like that maybe I want to bring the edges up and make it look like she's got more of that cheekbone in there like she's kind of talking so something like that make sense yes 
Now, ears. We talked about ears a little bit in the shape of the ears. I want to think about where they place and how they're going to fit. Students will very often, they'll kind of start with this, they'll start with a um, little round shape, and they're like, here you go, stick on the ear. Just like that. Perfect, right? What's wrong with this? She looks like Mickey Mouse, exactly. Because your ears don't stick out of your head like that, do they? Your ears actually go back, and I want to figure out where they go. So I'm going to take this, I kind of work my way around. Where do they line up? Oh, look at that. Top of my ear is about at my eye line, sometimes a little bit above. The bottom of my ear is just below my nose, and it's going to sit at that jawline. So if I want to make an actual realistic looking ear, I want to figure out kind of where. All right, so the jawline comes up here. There we go, kind of get that so you can see it a little better. I'm gonna thin the part that comes into the head because it's gonna grow out of the head. So I'm gonna thin the flat part. Let's see, I'm gonna go this way. This is well, it's a little big, not too bad. I'm gonna round this outside edge and I'm gonna get my wood sculpting tool again. And I'm just gonna to start to press in. Anytime you can press in the wood sculpting tool as opposed to drawing something in, the more realistic it's going to be. So I can kind of push in around here, get the look of that little piece that's sticking out. This is apparently going to be a attached lobe as opposed to the free hanging lobe. Ear look. Something like that. I'd probably spend a little more time on it, but we're getting low on time. So then I take this. The back part is coming out a little bit. Top is right by the eye. Bottom is below the nose. This is a bit of a large ear. I would again take a little more time, fix it up a little bit. I want to move it back by her jawline. It seems something like that. And loop that in. So I kind of get, that's a little big, but I, I get the placement a little more. So I would sculpt it. Your ears are really sculptural, your nose is really sculptural. Think of things that way. Now, for a woman, for hair, I can do things with hair. Anytime you're working with hair, the line or the mark or the texture you create should relate <laughs> to the length and direction of the hair. You know what, I had one piece over here. I wonder if it's still sitting out. Oh, there it is. We have some things that you can create textures just by how they go in. So you can get almost like a short curly hair. Maybe you add a little clay and bring that out. If you want hair that's coming out of the head, you want to think about the direction in which it's going to come out of the head and have your length of your line and the direction of your line indicate that so it looks more realistic. I might want to add just a little bit of clay so that that kind of shows the depth of the hair coming in and still have it come out of the head. This clay is really soft so this mark I'm making is kind of kind of rough, but I can play with direction, length, how much depth I add to it to get more of a look and add more pieces here. I want to do a little bit of something else first, so just kind of give you a start with the hair, and it, it gets pretty unique, the different things and how it might work. If you look at this one, I used a serrated rib, and remember it had to be a little bit deeper. This was the sample in the PowerPoint where it wasn't quite deep enough for the chia seeds if you want to make it a chia head. If you want to make it a chia head, you need a hole on top. Because remember, they do have to be hollow, like we talked about, and they have to be vented. So if, if I'm making this a chia head, I would take a loop tool and make a hole in here after I carve it out. If I don't, I want a hole from the bottom. I am going to clean up the base so that it looks a little bit straighter, a little neater when I'm done. And the most important thing is the hollowing part. So let's just say Betty's done for pretending. I'm now going to give her her lobotomy. I'm going to cut with the wire tool halfway down, and then I'm going to take that together and pull it and make like a shelf piece that sits in place right there. And I'm going to hollow from this side. So I'm going to take a loop tool, and I want it to be, we said no more than an inch thick, right? So about that. I have, still have a good thickness I can score and slip back in place. But I'm going to, let's move all these over so I can make a clay pile here. I'm going to take all this out so that it's not too thick. 
And I gotta do the same in here. So I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna carve out, I gotta be careful I don't like carve through her face, that would be no good. But I do wanna get as far down as I need to in here. Once you get too far, if you can't get through with the bigger loop tool, you can take the smaller loop tool and kinda of get in those spots. I also gotta get down here and make sure that this isn't too thick. So I could come around on the bottom and take out some of the clay here. So no parts are more than inch thick. This neck in here, maybe just a hole through there so that I keep the structure, I keep it. But what happens if you don't hollow, you will lose chunks of it. This one was too thick, obviously. That's why we lost chunks. So you wanna make sure you can leave it about an inch thick, hollow it out when you're all done. When that's done, you take this, score and slip it back into place. It's not a bad idea to carve the head and then work on the hair after. Score and slip this in, get it all evened out, put your hair on, get your ears on, all that kind of stuff. So that you end up with something that's not too thick and you have interesting depth and form and things there. Questions? That was a bit quick at the end to put it all in. All right, good enough. Thank you, Betty. Thank you, everyone. Good job. Thank you for your listening and attention. We're good.